Hey Blue Drivers, is it time for you to change the coolant in your vehicle? This is Jim and Chris. We're on a 2009 Chevy Impala 3.5 liter. Today, we're going to show you how to change the coolant in your car. Chris. This car's had a hard life. It used to be a rental. It's been driven around for 10 years, covered in snow and salt. And from the looks of it, we don't think the coolant's ever been touched. So today, we're going to take care of that. And we'll show you how to do it yourself and save some money. So let's get to it. This is a pretty simple tool list because there are no tools. The pan, the coolant, a funnel, and a tarp. All right, so step one is to drain the coolant out of the car. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the coolant fill cap. Now you wanna make sure you never do this when the car is hot and there's a risk of getting burned. Uh, and even then it's a good idea just to use a rag or something to remove the cap. So the cap on this car is not actually on the radiator, it's on the engine right here. So we'll just take that off. and put it aside. Once we open the petcock on the radiator, all the coolant is gonna drain out from right here under this radiator mount. So we wanna put a tray or a pan or something underneath to catch it all. That is one fancy pan. To drain the radiator, we're going to loosen the petcock on the radiator, which is on the passenger side near the bottom, right down here. Chris, do you need to use such a fancy pan? You do when you're not paying for it. <laughs> I use a milk jug with the top cut off and I stop it midway. Yeah, I guess that works too. Uh, Some Impalas will have a vent valve on the radiator on the driver's side over here. This car doesn't have one, so we don't have to remove it, but just check to see if your car does have this valve and if it does, you can just pull it out. Now we insert a funnel and then we're gonna start pouring in our coolant. This is a pre-mixed DexCool compatible coolant. And one tip, hold the jug sideways like this so you don't get the fluid surging and pouring all over the place. And we're just gonna keep filling until it reaches the top of the filler neck. It's always a good idea to maybe stop halfway through too and just look under the car to make sure that you didn't leave anything open. Now we'll just wait a second and some air will probably come out of the system. If you want, you can also gently squeeze a hose, uh, not too hard or you might spray coolant out. And this can also help get some air out of the system. You can see the bubbles there. And we'll top it up a bit more. For the next step, we're gonna have to start the engine. So we're gonna take the coolant filler cap, we're gonna put it on, but we're only gonna engage it a little bit, just enough that it doesn't come off. And why aren't you putting it on there tight, Chris? The big thing is where we're gonna be starting the engine. If we leave it running too long and the thermostat opens, everything's gonna heat up, the cooling system's gonna build pressure, and if the cap's on tight, when you try to remove it, that pressure's gonna come out explosively and spray hot coolant over the place. Okay, we're gonna start getting the air out of the system. This time we're gonna start the car and run it at 2,500 RPM for 40 seconds. Just a little coolant on the belt there. We'll make a little bit of noise. Okay, now we're gonna shut the car off and check the coolant. Carefully remove the cap. And top up the coolant. And the cap back on, just enough to engage the threads. Okay, we got quite a bit of air out of the system. This time we're gonna start, run at 2500 RPM. This time for 30 seconds. At this point, some safety glasses might not be a bad idea, just in case. We're gonna carefully remove the cap again. And top it up. 
And one last time, we'll put the cap on just enough to keep it from falling off. Okay, we're gonna restart again. Got just a little bit more air out of it. This time we're gonna start and run at 2,500 RPM for 20 seconds. Carefully take the cap off. And we'll top it up one last time. And you see this time, it didn't take much to fill it up. Now we're gonna fill the coolant bottle, about 400 milliliters of coolant. Now the coolant cap goes on all the way. Remember, from this point on, the system could be under pressure, so we don't wanna take the cap off unless the engine's completely cool. Okay, we're coming down the home stretch now. We're gonna start the car, take it to 2,500 RPM until the engine comes up to temperature. That assures us that the thermostat is on. We'll also get better confirmation if the heater in fact works. So bring it up to start the car, bring it to 2,500 RPM. Okay, we have the car up to temperature now. Heater's nice and warm. So the very final step, take it to 3,000 RPM for four seconds, back to idle for four seconds. We're gonna do this three times. Okay, now, pretty simple, we're just gonna shut the car off and let the engine cool. Now everything's nice and cool. You can see the coolant level in the bottle has dropped a little bit, so we're just gonna top that up. Okay, that's it. Pretty simple, huh? Save yourself a ton of money, do it yourself. And for a special challenge, see if you can spill coolant less than the two times on the serpentine belt that we did it today and let us squeal and smoke uh, out of the system. Chris. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> uh, one extra tip, you won't notice in the video that we use premix. If you wanna save a bit extra money, you can also go with the uh, concentrated stuff and mix that 50-50 with water and that'll save you a couple of extra cents. That's a great tip, Chris. And for more great tips, come to bluedriver.com. And for this video, you can like it and even subscribe to our channel on YouTube because we got great stuff coming at you all the time. Until next time, fear no fix.